Hey, everybody. It's your favorite emo ho talking about the most emo ad and perfect ad that we could have fucking got. Talkspace. This is who our show is brought to you by today. The only online therapy company that enables you to improve your mental health from anywhere at any time. Get matched with a licensed therapist from over 2,000 choices and message them whenever you need to. No commutes, no judgments. And we actually have a special offer for our listeners. Visit Talkspace.com slash decisions and use the code decisions to get $45 off your first month. Show your support for this show. Listen. With all the kinky shit that we've been telling y'all motherfuckers to do and all them listener letters, y'all been writing in with all these goddamn problems, get on Talkspace, yes. okay? I've been going to a therapist, telling him all my shit. I, sometimes I get high when I talk to him because I just want to really let myself go. <laughs> and what I'm telling you is Talkspace is dope because you don't necessarily have to look and see the judgment in the face when you tell somebody, <laughs> I fucked three people last night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so get on Talkspace and uh, tell them we sent you. Let's start the show. Yes. Also, guys, if you do not know, we will be in the ATL this weekend. This Saturday, come check us at the Plaza Theater. We are coming to you guys live. It's going to be lit. We got all types of shit. We are sponsored by Spunk Lube. And so y'all come and get some lube. If your pussy not wet enough, we got you. We got you, goddammit. Um, we will be I there. I mean, if you're running out of spit. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be there. Um, I want to let you guys know, um, because we've been actually getting questions, whether you bought a general admission ticket or a VIP ticket, we are meeting all of you guys. So we are having a meet and greet after the show. And for the merchandise that you guys are seeing on our Instagram page, we will have t-shirts available for sale. So they will be available in white or black. Um, it is only while items last. So come early, get your t-shirts, and we are super excited to see you guys in Atlanta. Um, and now, welcome yet again to another episode, guys, of Horrible Decisions. This is your girl, Mandy B. And I'm Weezy. And, and we have a really hot girl across uh, A super us. hot girl. We are joined <laughs> by such a beautiful woman. I've been stalking her on Instagram. I've been like, can you come this week? Can you come this week? Can you come this week? <laughs> and finally, we got her in. So, can Are we... you by? Huh? Let's her. just start it off with that. Do you like women? Look, here we go. Can you stop throwing your pussy hmm. to everybody? I'm not throwing it. I'm trying to look out for you, bitch. bitch. I got this. You ain't got to worry about me, honey. <laughs> you ain't got to worry. My emoji game strong under them pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves to our listeners and let them know who you are and what you do? Sure. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, Hello. we're making her blush, y'all. Uh, I am blushing. No, my name is Jamila Lemieux. Um, I'm a writer and a cultural critic and uh VP of programming. Okay, for humble flex. Cash VP. What's a cultural? What was that? Cultural critic. Cultural critic. What's what that? is that? So I talk. She to cancels him. people. That's what Van no, said. So <laughs> Van, on, yo, Van. Van. Van Lathan was like, so she basically cancels no, everyone. I mean, that's you what existed. Van always says, and I'm like, I actually don't. I'm always the one like, stop. We don't cancel. Like, well, I, we canceled Kanye, but um, oh, so yeah, we, it's like you got. It has to be like it's just like all right. Jamila so there's what? like in school, Jamila. She's like, what's your name? Jamila Lemieux. Jamila. Okay, yes. Jamila, what um, you about to say about Kanye? <laughs> you telling me this? Everybody knows how much I love him. You about to tell me we not canceling this singer? <laughs> so listen. Okay. You know what? She, I, was so there 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 we go. I know you don't like the word woke, but I was trying to tell you. I do hate the word. Shut the fuck up. I, that. I, I hate that you. word. I think it's the word. He's fucking like, embarrassing us out here. He's, last, he's fucking giving white people. Let her talk. Let her talk. Let her say why she's not canceling Kanye. So think back to when you was in school, right? You like high school. You you get like a detention. You get, or maybe you get a warning, you get a detention, you get insult suspension, you get out of school suspension, then you get expelled, right? So, like, she said you skip into the expulsion too quick. So, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, so, I wouldn't say that he's expelled, but he got to be at a whole other school for a minute, and maybe he can come back. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not done forever but like you gotta lie you gotta do summer school you gotta do I night think that school depends you gotta on the do crime. sunday let's school. take it to jail you know what i'm saying <laughs> you smoke weed outside yeah you go to jail for a few days maybe you get a ticket you kill yeah. somebody we ain't ever gonna see you again right right this motherfucker said slavery was a choice are we not done he misspoke yeah i'm done <laughs> i'm <laughs> done with I guess with the, the the asterisk by it that like if you came back and said everything I said was wrong, I was fucked up on cocaine or I was you so know, you whatever think he's on he drugs. Is, I'm, I suspect you know I uh, you I know I'm not making any back. allegations. I'm just saying that his speech patterns are like that. I don't of somebody and who knows who this uh, this does, episode is coming out on what May 14th. Yeah. So who knows what else is going on right. by now? Right. But um, I don't know if you, you're a listener of the show, but I am obsessed. 
with Kanye, yes. right? Me and Alex both. We went to a fucking Kanye art show on I Saturday. <laughs> right before he said that slavery was a choice thing. I know. They That's what a, I thought they, you were getting ready to say. You're not, you, you can't cancel him. You can't cancel oh, him. I thought it, that, was, I'm not even going to yeah, lie. I, like, I thought she was going to be super like, I know Kanye said this, but yeah, like, that's I, what thought I was she was like, gonna be thought super I was for too, Kanye yeah. because she's obsessed yeah, with him. Yeah, that's what I was like. like well, I mean, yeah. so much Yeezy merch. I cut it up on live. I said, because yeah. you were hype. That was so much. It wasn't a hype. Beast. That's who, like one who of those people who, who videotape themselves crying on Instagram. I'm gonna tell you what I did and why I did it because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a hype beast, but America. I'm not about to sit here and wear that Make America yeah. Great shit again. And everybody knows I have mad Yeezy shit on my fucking page, and I don't ever want to be associated with it again. Yeah. So whether it's called a hype beast or not, I'll jump on the team of not fucking with Trump and yeah. fucking with black people and no, cutting up fair. that shit. I don't fuck with him at all right now. Like, I, I only, like, he can come back if he apologize. He has to say everything I said was wrong. Mm-hmm. And here's how I, you know, whether it's just I was wrong or something was wrong with me, but you have to, like, disavow. But there's even, crazy, he's a narcissist. No so I don't think that narcissists admit to being well, wrong. Well, he tried Very to rarely. renege, you know what I'm saying, once Van called him out, which is why it kind of upset me when I just got in there. But then he Alex did was like, Well, did you see the video after? And it was like, it doesn't matter. You needed to say something to me. And you know who really pissed me off? The black dude with the dreads from GM, uh, yeah. TMZ, Charles, his face should have been a fucking meme when yeah, he it said that have. shit. What? And it wasn't. You should have jumped. And you sat here with your black that. ass <laughs> and let him do this shit? Do right. you know how many white people watch TMZ? Do you know how many white people can't wait to fucking say? I mean, dude, even Kanye said, yeah. you guys just I was choose holding to my be breath. I was sitting there like, where's Van? Because I didn't know. Like, I had been offline yeah. for a while. So I, maybe it had been up for like an hour before I saw it. So, like, I'm just watching Harvey and, you know, and, and Charles and Kanye. And this, like, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm looking at Charles like, you you're not going to react. Like, you're not, like, why are you not, like, I understand you gotta let people talk, but you should cut like, out. where's Van? Charles like, isn't Van, though. That he so it Charles doesn't matter. Right. He's black. Right, he's black, he's not. but it's an interview, and you have to realize, although we like cutting motherfuckers off, you gotta let people talk. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten yeah. what they got from Kanye had he interrupted him. Okay, They well, had to okay, let Kanye well, shoot what? himself in the foot. Van was a more, um, what, passed around clip than the rest of the shit was. Van going off, more people are talking about that, so yes, he would have got that. Go ahead, Alex. Did you guys see how they Cut it up though. Yeah, yeah. it was definitely no, no, editing yeah. the whole it was thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moon, yeah. That's what he is. Yeah. yeah, but when he said the um, slavery was, was a choice, in the longer version, he clarifies mental he's enslavement. About, uh, mental yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop. But Stop. the first clip You're that went out, me, he how do you get mentally enslaved? How do you get, you, yeah, do you get right, mentally you enslaved? Just... Do you think they did that by choice by sitting there and watching people revolt? Right. And then when they caught slaves and raped and killed them and fucked their wives in front of people, do you think we mentally were just right. we could have broke free from that? But now, did you see the Charlemagne like that? interview? That was a choice. Did you see the Charlemagne interview? I don't give a fuck what that. No, what happened with Charlemagne? That's what I'm saying. He speaks about it. No, I read. I know. I read the quote, and it's still yeah. it's somebody. Still there's no sus, bro. Word, the, the word choice does not. Belong Why would he do it again? Why would he say it again? Why would he do that again? Slavery. You know, like. We're we're not talking about ca- like being captured, right? We're not talking about like what could you have done at the point where they showed up. You know what I mean? You're saying like people that were here were supposed to in a foreign land where they don't know how many white people they're surrounded by. They don't know. They where don't they know. They're yeah, they they can't can't like, they can't. Like you, fucking about, religion is sitting there telling you God's gonna do this, strike you but down. Then, you don't understand yeah. anything. These are people that are uneducated. Let's not talk about yeah. you know. Well, not uneducated, but uneducated. they could not speak they the language know. of this land, and they didn't know the. You know what I mean? Like for, in terms what of they what they, they weren't educated enough to know what to do. I mean, we can all agree with that, right? I mean, sure, it's not like they weren't capable of that, but when you're literally kept from yeah. learning how to read. How can you formulate any? How can you formulate this plan to leave without being yeah. scared? No, yeah. and many of them did. You know what I mean? Like they there did. was, they were, and they were met with violence. Like for every Harriet Tubman, there's scores other that tried. Exactly. You know, like there, the the idea that we were just happy on the plant. You know, I'm happy in the house, or I'm happy on the plantation, or like, oh, it's just sad, and we just gonna be here. Right. Like, that's not who our people were, and I, right. I just hate anytime somebody. And you know, obviously Kanye does it on a way worse level, but just you know. Even hearing kids talk sometimes, like, there's, there's some shame around slavery. Mm-hmm. It's something we should be embarrassed about. We think of them as just, like, victims. But it's like, no, you you didn't die. Like, enough of you survived that we're here. That we're still here. Yep. Like, y'all were heroes. Like, oh, the y'all numbers. Were... You know, think about the numbers. I swear to God. Let me tell y'all how hard it was for me. Alex I have not sold for, wh- shit wait, on Alex, Craigslist to pay for a Kanye concert yeah. when I was in college. So you guys maybe can't understand. I mean, if you, if you listen, you know how much I love Kanye. But I have used my money to fucking support this motherfucker. So, giving up my things yeah. to support him. Do you know what I fucking feel like right now? I'm so embarrassed. I had no choice but to be a fucking hype beast, so you say, and cut up shit. Yeah. And ask for a dick sucking squad for, for Van. Yeah, she... 
<laughs> he does. I almost thought when I saw that Kanye clip, I was like, I can't fuck white boys no more. I was never like a huge <laughs> fan really- of Kanye, so it didn't like resonate to me the same. I mean, of course, what he said. Definitely, I was just like, this motherfucker. But like, I was never that much of a fan. Like, yeah. to me, if J. Cole would have came out and said some shit like this, it hurts. So I can, I guess I can see. But yeah. I think J. Cole is way more woke than that. But I won't He is. Woke. J. 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 Cole's Cole's way, way more woke. But yeah, we have well, getting old yet. Yeah. You know? But the thing, you know, and I'm from Chicago, you know? Are so you? Like, I am. And so I have Vic like Mensa a certain... Vic Mensa can get that pussy. <laughs> I love Vic Mensa. I have Mensa. a certain level. It's funny. The first time I saw Vic Mensa perform... He's so good. He was in high school. He's like so It was at South by Southwest. He Because he was in this band called kids these days and so they're like so I'm in my mid 20s and he was like 18 or something interesting kid I've never I don't know him you know but we have people in common but he just reminds me so much of the neighborhood where we grew up I'm like people think that there's something weird going on I'm like no he is such a Hyde Park ass artsy boy like he is exactly I told you I I like his creatives I I, I gotta think for creatives right now like I've just realized that every guy I deal with is like covered with tattoos and can't really speak very well but um (laughs) anyways we're gonna go Kanye got no tattoos and can't talk for shit (laughs) so Um, so what we like to do when we have guests um and we haven't done this in a while because y'all have been having all these episodes with just me and Weezy, but we do icebreakers. Okay. So with icebreakers, we kind of like to break the ice. Um, and so, <laughs> fuck you. I didn't know what to say. Do we? We do. Because that was not implied. Fuck you. Um, we like to, what we're gonna do this episode is we're gonna. I have two questions for Would You Rather. Okay. Um, so the first question, being that we are all women, and this is a conversation we haven't yet really had on the show, I wanted to ask: Would you rather get cum in your hair after you just finished styling it, or right in your eye? And I know this is important for black girls. We don't like it. And our hair <laughs> fucked up. I'm going to just so, w- w- Well, you would do hair over your eye? Well, I guess eye makes it. Have you ever had cum in your eye? I mean, it, it makes it like a pink eye, but you could say pink eye. Bro. You got pink eye. If it's in so your you hair. So you think I want to look contagious yeah, or no. just have you a fucking you get, you get flakes, like white flakes, if that cum okay, comes. I would no, not. I mean. You can. I, <laughs> It, that me getting my hair wet ain't really the greatest tragedy. So it's not yeah. okay. like I, I'm maybe not fucking I might my not eye. Be right freshly girl. styled. I don't want nothing Put on a my hat eye. On. But I mean, I have natural hair, so like even um, freshly styled, so it's like. So I mean, I guess okay. So if I'm I got gotten pressed out, if I got pressed out, I still don't want it in my eye. Like you said, like me if neither. you got a pink eye. Dude, I mean, have you that lasts for days. Salt in it does. That, that shit burns, bitch. Right? All that sodium. Burn. I've never had it, and I, I've, oh, it's like one of my deepest. <laughs> all, all I mean, sodium, the, the cum that I be swallowing don't taste like nothing, so I don't think his cum would give I'm me a pink eye. I'm not saying cum tastes like anything, but it's still going to. Is there a lot of salt in it if it doesn't taste like salt? I don't want anybody's kids in my eyes, bro. I don't want anything in my eye, period. No. Yeah. Okay, so we're taking the hair over I'd the eye? I'd rather you come on my shirt, and I'd have to wear a fucking stain for the rest of the day than you come on my eye. People be like, damn, you got pink eye. And like, no, 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 it's just cum. You can no, get close. No, you don't say it's cum. Be like, damn, yeah, man, but it'll go this away. Can be, it's contagious. Oh, pink eye is contagious. Yeah. Oh, y'all it's right. Red. Okay, no, let's get really it in our like hair then. Okay, niggas, come in our hair. Don't come in our eye. Great um, question, Mandy. Great you said qu- what? I said great question. <laughs> what? What's the problem? I was really thinking about my hair being done because I used to be one of those like, uh, my hair done. What you doing? <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Bitch, put a headband on. Shit. Uh-uh. <laughs> Do y'all wear sunglasses inside? Like, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you got a little cum. <laughs> Try wearing a shower no, 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 cap no, while she it's fucking. A little right. I got to put a shower cap on now when I fuck? Bitch, you <laughs> ask them niggas to aim. <laughs> Okay, okay, my bad. Sometimes it shows. I be telling them, look, you're going to come on my tits they, if they you can't, can't get it right. They you're only going to get titties. If you want face, <laughs> keep it below the brow. Below I'm the nose. So oh, this no, is I my next question. Um, <laughs> would you rather date someone who takes five seconds to come or who takes at least five hours to come? And I asked this because I just had this talk on my Instagram mm. Live. And um, so for the people that don't know, I've been fucking with the same guy since like November. Just recently had new dick. Um, and that new dick took 40 minutes in real life to come. And I was, this isn't sex minutes. This is real life minutes. So in sex minutes, it felt like five hours. Um, and (laughs) I just was really just like, I think I would kind of rather a nigga come fast than do like it. It's a lot. Yeah. So I wanted to know what you guys thought. Would y'all rather a nigga take a long time to come or come fast? I'm going to go fast (laughs) and just do something else. Well, yeah. So, like, fast if he can get it back up again. You right. know, because the thing is, like, oh, I, okay. I'm 33. So, like, my sex drive is really high, you know? And, like, Mine men too. and they're... I love late. how she threw that in there. So, it's very... Right. You heard them say I'm beautiful. Sex drive is high. <laughs> I am a VP. <laughs> <laughs> right. Humble flexing. Uh, natural no, 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 no. Right? 
what? Almost perfect, but I have a kid. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That makes me more. That's perfect. okay. He got a pension um, plan and stuff. Yeah. Actually, I just fucked somebody, baby mama. So I think I'm down for fucking. Pe- <laughs> what <laughs> you kids who have? I know. I said on a recent episode, okay. I didn't. I don't like fucking um, girl women who have she kids. Said she wouldn't yeah. fuck Amber Rose or Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, but open, right? <laughs> but I did just fuck some own kids and it was fun. So I think I changed my mind, girl. You so the, fan, the fans, sorry, fans Amber, might want to know the fans. I know, might right? <laughs> Wait, fans may what? Are you single? Yes. I am good. So my I, emoji, I thought you was working on my your emojis phone. doing work. I'm asking for the fans. I yeah. you better be because I'm, I'm on this already. So back up. I'm Alice. not not seeing <laughs> anyone, but I'm not in an exclusive relationship. Gotcha. That's okay. probably the best way to say so it. So both dating. of both of y'all say though you would rather a, a nigga come fast than well come if he can't like the thing if is, he can get if back he up. can get back up if it's just like who I'm tired then I'm a like, lot no, of them are like that. Long. So like the long thing it wouldn't bother like I like to have sex for a long time it wouldn't bother me that we could take breaks you know what I mean yeah play in between we can watch bitch I lay on his thigh watch some Jesus and Mero and then fuck that's my routine right now. Well, he came, like, so the guy that I was fucking, like, he had me in every position, like, to where he had me ride dick, like, four different ways. Was and it I, the first time you had sex? Um, don't bring this up. Um, I'm not no, it funny. wasn't. It wasn't. I'm only um, asking because maybe he was trying to impress you. No, we fucked eight years ago, but, you know. That, but that's a long time. Yeah, that was a long time ago. It's, it was, he, don't remember, he didn't remember, right? No, we ain't remember fucking. Well, I remembered fucking, but I ain't bring it up. Cause, okay, so it was the first time. It happened. Yeah. Why was he trying to impress me? It's, it's the first time. time. Well, I don't think so because he nah, went. No, 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 no. Bro. I, you know why I want to say this? Can you? You know why I want to say this? No, real quick. There is no impressing when we fucked three times. So I ended up staying at his house for like damn near twenty four hours. We fucked three times. Each time we fucked those three times, he lasted the same amount of time. I then went over his house two days later and we fucked again and then had a threesome. And when we had the threesome, he lasted the same amount of time. Then we fucked in the morning. Who well, y'all had a threesome with? His baby mama. But we're not going to talk about it. Oh <laughs> Why are we? God, this is the best thing I've heard. Dude, this no, is better what? than a fucking religious dude owning a sex club. Want... Sorry. Wait, just... Jamila, we need and a wait, plot what? Thick. Can you interview wait. with me? <laughs> now, let's and the try. plot wait. Hold on. I want to get what? into the story. Wait. 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 Uh, yeah, I, I, I too. So, this questions. is the nigga that you, you robbed. Why? Wait, you don't bring asking. all this up, Chilla. I'm going to block that motherfucker out. Don't bring up all okay. them details, bro. Okay, so you fucked him eight. Does he now know that he fucked you eight years ago? No, because I ain't bring up the last time because it wasn't a good run. Does he we know had. you have a podcast? Mm hmm. He ain't about to listen. Uh, no, maybe mama might know. No, I don't know. But she was How amazing. What's the status of their relationship? Like, oh, no. Um, he's, she's his first baby mama. We're not going to talk about the amount that he oh, has. God. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all not judge me? But um, yeah, he's, she's his first baby mama. Um, and yeah, they have a few kids together. But they're no longer together. Girl, please. No, they're not any longer together. They together enough. They, they still fucking. They still have sex often. I mean, I don't know how often. I don't think it was often. Girl, if so- he fucked you two days before his baby mama and she was that down, they still fucking. Don't let niggas. Well, I mean, and, and I, I'm not. The- I, I wouldn't care. I mean, and she's not the plus one. You are. That's yeah, but thing, actually, right? I didn't feel that way. So he didn't kiss her or yeah. eat her pussy the whole time. But he kissed me, and which made me kind of feel uncomfortable, actually, because I thought I was the plus one, but I didn't feel like the plus one yeah. at all. And when we had talked about his relationship with her, I don't think like he would never be back with like the intimacy wasn't there that I would have ex- expected to be there if I was the plus yeah. one. So I mean, it was fun. Fuck both of y'all because y'all looking re- what real. What made judgy. you say yes? Because I wanted a threesome, and so I've been wanting <laughs> a threesome. She, were you like just attracted to her too? Or? She was very pretty. I mean, I didn't know what she looked like until they came and picked me up in real life. I didn't even ask for a picture because I'm I like, so I mean, I'm sure she good looking. They was like, you know what? Get the babysitter. I was just. I met this bitch on Instagram <laughs> last night. Pussy was good. Shut the fuck up. No, it was fun. Um, you know what this is? This is what? Mandy been losing mad weight. She want to show that body to you anybody. Know Right. Shut up, <laughs> it's true. Maybe it's oh, like oh, you, you do, oh, that's good. and this is very like I just gotta like whoever wants to see well, it. No, new, I, well, I've been new wanting new me. So, so this is the thing. This, new year, new me for show, bitch. I'm trying to get some more. But um, no, I've been wanting to have a threesome with 24 seven. But the last time so I had, a, I'm not emotional, bitch. The la- the problem is he wants me to bring in a girl. The last time that I brought one of my friends into a threesome with this nigga who was dropping that fire ass dick. She like went behind my back on the Instagram and they reconnected. But what does that matter? She, she fucked. 
to him without, no because that's mm. my dick bitch mm. that's so my dick it's not I don't, like he gonna stop fucking you I don't want my friends like at the time she was a close friend so I don't want my friends fucking my consistent dick that especially sounds... when you're local no, no it's no, not me. Yeah, that's, that's not that. me being, being emotional at all yeah. this is my dick and you know that this is who I have consistently not only that I don't want to bring in a local bitch because then she may be starting to take I don't need my days taken away from me yeah. like no, so you know, point, you, point, point, been, point, you so, can't share. Cause. You let that nigga, but it was a good point. Fuck you. I don't love. <laughs> let's get back to the baby mama drama. No, so you there can, is no baby scene, mama bitch. drama. On, I'm on. not gonna set. The don't scene. you want to hear this so, shit? No, so I'm part, me I'm up. Just so horrified. No, and that's I mean, also because <laughs> I'm gonna take um, only horrified. because I had. And I don't use. You know, I don't like those terms, but I have a baby daddy, and I like and I adore him. We have a wonderful relationship. He's married. I love. You know, his wife, That's she and great, I have gotten right? to be friends. I could not fathom, even if she were in the picture, wanting to, like, we're just so not that. That's Because right. they fucking. That's why. Well, she loved his dick. It was it was good dick. I can't even hold you. Like, if me and, say, 24-7 were to have kids and we're not together, that dick is so Did good, I might keep that dick. Did you know that, that it was his dick. baby mama before ah. he picked you up? Yeah, he told me his baby mama but wanted a threesome. But you didn't see a fucking picture. I trusted him. I said, what she looked like? She said, he, she pretty with long hair. I said, okay. I just... <laughs> I and just, it's hard to imagine and I still <laughs> love you, like, I don't know did I mean, they use like, a condom fuck you it was fun I just like I, it just happened what if y'all was sister wives oh, I wouldn't mind that situation he got you money rich. he got money we rich um, how many guest passes they got to the games what? <laughs> uh, I, 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 <laughs> this is what I be talking about bitch I, 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 it's I, I, off season we not worried about guest passes <laughs> um, anyways we're going to go ahead and get into our vanilla shit for this episode. Y'all ain't shit. Y'all really are just not shit. Like, and I'm not. fuck I, you. That nigga with, is not. No, it was, I had a great time. Um, fuck y'all. Sip, sip, sip my goddamn smoothie. Um, anyways, guys, so we're going to go on to our vanilla shit. As you guys know, we choose an article um, in which talks about some things that are going on in, you know, goddamn society. Sometimes it has to do with sex. Sometimes it doesn't. This specific one, because we have another woman in the house, and we haven't had a woman guest in a while, have we? Not that I a can... A female guest? We just literally had... Did we? Yeah. Jesse Wu. Oh, Chrissy that was... Monroe. Okay, we were... We were... Okay, but those were... Uh, Okay, with both of us. So um, I wanted to bring this up. We haven't really had the discussion about it, and a lot of our listeners say that we dropped the ball in 2017 by not discussing it. So I kind of wanted to bring up this topic. Um, it is about the Me Too movement. Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit before. So Russell Simmons, as you guys know, he recently um, was charged with a sexual assault allegation, um, and it's odd because he has come forth issuing statements that he's now supporting the me too movement i'm so sorry can you turn this off oh she has a vibrator going off i'm not, I'm not. bro Please, dude, it's a it. vibrator that she hasn't used yet All right. um anyways so i wanted to kind of t have the discussion with you guys if you feel that a guy who has sexually assaulted a female in any way possible um if he can kind of support this type of movement or what what do you think no. of a guy who does no i mean this isn't like this is like george zimmerman coming out for black lives matter oh. you know what i'm saying like it, it's so Ooh, insulting that hit deep because he's like we're in the middle of it we're not talking about years later right i've been in therapy i've done because that was the story like, at first because remember closed? no no he every, still has still 12 pending open. investigation you i know. think it's it's almost a um I don't know if like his PR team made him do some shit like this, but I, I think that was bad. I think it makes I a very it, big mockery out of these women. Absolutely, and just the moment, and just that you think you're so arrogant to think that you're a necessary voice right now. Right. I think he, the thing ooh. is, like, he would have he played himself because early on when the allegations start, you know, the first two he responds with like, you know, I'm sorry for anyone that I've hurt. I, you know, basically kind of like I never thought I'd done something like this, but I was young. I have drugs. I'm a very different person now. So anyone who I may have hurt unintentionally, blah blah blah. I'm sorry. And so then as the allegations start piling up, yeah. that's when he's like, he tried to do the hashtag not me remember and he oh. deleted and he went dark on social for a minute like he, all his accounts were because it was really quick because he had a whole like well yeah and as soon as so he got accused he like stepped down from his position yeah and I'm sure that was also a, a PR move yeah, yeah. I think even if well, it that wasn't was appropriate, true though because at first it was like face. you're taking this break from your you know you can't be a public figure right now you can't be leading yeah. these companies you're gonna go work on you and figure this stuff out and then as they started to come on I guess after a while he was like no not all of these people are telling the truth. And, and I want to, you know, tell my side of the story, not me. 
you know, and then he started to kind of imply that he hadn't really done anything too wrong to anyone. It just, it was a bad walk. Like, I feel like he might have been going without his PR team before, and now there might be someone trying to help that out a bit. But I just, it's, you know, what he needs to do right now is sit down, be quiet, um, <laughs> get some help, talk right. to people, do somebody make, that you know, make amends for yeah, the things I that mean, you've done. And I think it's crazy, too, because he is a man who has two daughters. Yeah. Um, or maybe, is it three? I mean, he has a lot of kids. I don't right? think, I don't think that having children, children matters to. what you do. Well, for him to like, have daughters, and I say that because he actually brought up his daughters in a post in saying this. Um, he said, shout out to black women just because um, he paid <sighs> tribute to black women who have bared the biggest burden and the unequal treatment of women of all races and religions and suggested that without guidance from the feminine forces, then men will destroy the planet. Shut your ass. Right. It's just right. not. Um, you were you talking that <laughs> shit a few weeks ago? So shut up. It's just <laughs> why are you the damage? laughing over that's that, Alex? Not... What, what is your take on this? Do you nope. feel? Do you feel like maybe it's something that he just shouldn't even be talking about? Yes. Yes. Agreed. Right. Yes. Yeah. You should not be talking. Can you just imagine? Should not be talking. If like Snoop Dogg starts telling us, like from a from a lighter scale, yeah. starts telling <laughs> us that weed is bad for you. I mean. <laughs> I, I, but you know, let's talk about Snoop for a minute. Cause wait, does this, this Snoop have allegations against him? No, but remember oh, I was for like, years. But, no. but I know, <laughs> right? Like, damn, we you just lost Kanye. Like, like, and I know I'm a little bit older than you all, but like, I remember Snoop yeah, yeah. at the MTV Awards with the two women on chains, like dogs. I, I right, do like, that. and that Snoop, you know, was known as a pimp. Yeah. Right. Like during his and has talked about it because remember he did like Girls Gone Wild and stuff and and, and I'm not mm-hmm. saying that that I'm not criticizing it might not have been Girls Gone Wild but he did some sort of porn kind of like where he was hosting not oh, porn, yeah. I remember that you know and I'm not judging that stuff but I remember him talking about pimping you know and so I'm like if you were actually an active pimp the things that you did to women and girls you oh. don't have any role and he and I know that he's been going in on Kanye I know that he's had this kind of race consciousness thing yeah. going for a while and I appreciate that but I'm like when are y'all gonna to deal with your gender stuff mm. you know like when are you like like when are we going to talk about that make a man i'm not saying like snoop you have to be canceled forever because at this point look you're doing a cooking show with martha stewart like there's no but there's also something pulling you back. about just like how <clears throat> you know brilliant idiots they talk about rape culture how they didn't know yeah. and how russell said it was years ago right there was also something that i think was more so widespread and more mainstream society success uh, acceptable as far as the treatment of women years ago absolutely and i don't necessarily know if these men would do that today but there's another thing to be said though about a persona mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so like the girls on chains at an award show it's this like I'm Snoop Dogg. It's like this lavish sub play, whatever. The pimp thing, even. I think. Well, no, but he was, he claimed to have actually had women in his stable, that mm-hmm. he was a pimp. That, and I know. Was but the pimp the other thing, even, was a thing like that, that yeah. was so fucking. Cat Williams. Yeah. Um, what was the dude that was on next Friday that was next to him? M- Magic Mike or something? Yeah. Not Magic Mike, something like that. All of these dudes were like, it was like to yeah. boast and brag about it, made it fucking cool. Yeah. But some of them wanted were... to be with pimps. It, w- Actually, we have an episode coming out with a girl named Ali XXX. I didn't know this, but I kind of assumed that there had to have been something good about being with a pimp. So I asked her. She was a former escort. I said, does it give you safety? No, like, like broken women. You know what I'm saying? Like, does it give you safety? Does it like, does he stand by you? Does he make sure that the men are like screened or something like that? She's like, no, they literally take your money. Women just want to have someone. But I think also when you, if we're looking back into the hip hop culture and how they treated women, um, Tip Drill was one of the most like yeah. iconic I don't, videos. I don't and think we've progressed that far from And Tip I don't Drill. think, like, right. I, I think but even still... looking back at that video, okay, Alex, don't be over there reminiscing now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm torn saying. because I like stuff like that. That's what right? I'm saying. <laughs> but the thing is, so I, so I don't think... And I like stripper and, culture. I don't think yeah. there's any... I like strippers. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I've never thought anything was wrong with stripping. The problem is not the dancers, it's the men, right? And so, mm-hmm. like, people talk about, like, oh, she's a dancer or she does sex work. Clearly, no dad, no self-esteem, no goals, no education. All these things that are oftentimes, you know, arguably more often than not wrong, right? Absolutely. Like, many of them brilliant girls where they go to college or not right many of them have great relationships with their families and they this is what they wanted to do or maybe they don't maybe they don't love it but they're like it's a job in the same way do you love cooking fries do you love working honestly in it's the office? closest thing to sales work you know but but have what, you ever had a stripper the, that you really don't want to dance for you and you spend <laughs> their money like you spend your money on them they'd be like come on blah blah, blah. Yeah, like, it's, it's, they sold me into this i don't like hoes talking to me the, the stripper yeah. 
Just shut that ass. Don't the problem is that there are so many men <laughs> who don't know how to respect women, period. Mm, right? Agreed. So it's like, mm-hmm. don't think that if he says, well, you treat a housewife like a housewife and a hooker like a hooker, that, that don't don't think he respects the housewife. Right? Like, don't right? think that for a minute. Like, if you don't see the Good ability point. of us to be full human beings who deserve, you know, maybe you don't want to be married to somebody who's on a pole. That's your right. The same way the pole dancer could be like, I don't want to be married to a square who works in the office. Right. right? There's nothing wrong with that. But mm-hmm. when you say that the quality of that person, right. you're right, is different because this one does something related to sex and this one doesn't. And so with so many men coming to the clubs with the attitude, and some of them just, hey, we go have fun. We slap ass. We talk shit, you know, get a dance, maybe something extra, but they still respect these women as people. But it's a lot of them that think that with their little 20 20, 40, $200, you know, and they come in that they've bought her. Right. right. You know, like and not, not the that experience. Sex work is um, something that women choose to do. And, and like some women, and the ones we've at least um, interviewed, including Allie, you'll hear soon, enjoyed what she did. She She's now, she's a mom now. She said, shit, I miss having an adventure and meeting yeah. men and shit like that. All these women aren't fucking broken. Yeah. Well, so something, else so, that, yeah. it's something that I feel is, is strange, and I don't know why men do it, and maybe you have an answer to this, but even a female who's open with her sexuality or one who chooses to get into stripping or porn, yeah. um, they blame it on daddy issues. Yeah, um, A lot of men feel like had had a man been involved, right. she wouldn't be doing it's this. It's Chris Rock joke. You know, my job is to keep him off the pole. You know, my, my number one job as a father is to keep my daughters off the pole. And I remember laughing at it at the time when it came out. Everybody laughed at it. And, you know, my dad would, you know, reference him from time to time. And he, he made a joke about it the other day. And I was like, well, actually... No, your job is to make sure that your daughter is happy, mm-hmm. healthy, and well adjusted, whether she's on a pole or not. But there you know? are some and, and the dancers that would say in entertainment industry, women that would say they still don't want their kids to do that. I think did Giselle say yeah. that? Something like that. She's like, yeah. I mean, yeah. But I think the reason I mean, being I wouldn't is want my daughter to have my job. I mean, there's a stigma you know? about right. it, but it's and it's stigma. unsafe. I don't want my kids too. to go through yeah. something that Absolutely. people are going to fucking right. talk shit about you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and the stigma and the lack of safety in a world where you know women are already stigmatized and and mm-hmm. already unsafe. That right. yes, in, in certain environments, it's, it's exacerbated by doing sex work, right? And some of them is super safe, and some of them is not. So, and your average person doesn't know the spectrum of all the different things you could be doing. You know what I mean? That like you could mm-hmm. be safe, you could be empowered, you could be surrounded by women and people who care about you, but they can only see the seedy motel from the amateur porn. You know, mm-hmm. they can only see the stories in the newspaper about somebody getting murdered off a of Craigslist and stuff. So it's not, you know, I don't think we should be surprised that families are like, this isn't what I want for my child. But what we had to really, you know, as a feminist, like for me, it's about encouraging people to like don't talk about these women and girls as if they're less than mm-hmm. somebody who does something, you know, quote unquote, oh, respectable. There's right? something I want to um, bring up that I thought was amazing. And you, I hate to bring up all these tidbits and pieces from an episode that people are going to hear. But we, I interviewed an escort that said, I'm so tired of the whole hierarchy. Mm. And Cardi B said something about, don't get it twisted. I wasn't fucking for money. I was just a stripper. And she's yeah. like, okay, bitch, so one hoe is, you know, not greater than the other hoe. She said that street walkers look at women that are escorts online like they're lazy. Mm. And the other ones look at them like they're dirty. Like they're cheap. And right? it's mm. like, but we've all fucking done it, though. But yeah. unfortunately, that's what I'm saying. Like, as women, we already have men beating us down and saying mm. certain things um, because of the choices we make with our bodies. I feel like as women and people, um, as, especially as us wanting to empower each other, shouldn't be sitting here making any si- type of fucking hierarchy or thinking, um, I'm a better hoe because I charge $1,000 right. and you only charge $200. Well, that, like, like, maybe yeah. you get, maybe you know, she like, get 10 yeah. people. Right. Well, part of that is like that is patriarchy, right? Yeah. So the same way, like the things that the men say to us, like, oh, you know, I'm judging you based on how many people you've been with or how short your skirt is or whatever. Like when we're so often we're competing for men, mm-hmm. either actually a real life man or just the idea of who's the more desirable woman. Right. Who has a who occupies a better station in society, Ooh. you know, and so much of that is tied to our relationship to men. And the other side is just capitalism, right? So it's like the same way the person who waits tables at, you know, Ruth Chris might look down at the person who waits tables at at Red Lobster, who looks down at Denny's, who looks down at McDonald's. I looked with a girl Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago who was a waitress or maybe bartender at a high-end restaurant. Mm -hmm. And she would always talk shit about girls that worked at like an Olive Garden. And I'm like, bitch, but it's probably busier. Like I mean, the, well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like just yeah. to just to to judge based off that, I think that it's um, counterproductive yeah. in what a I, lot of us women are trying to do when yeah. we're trying to build each other up. And I and I think without 
knowing it, a lot of us beat each other down and it's, it's, yeah. it's hecky. And I think it's something that should probably stop even when we do it subconsciously where yeah. we don't know we're doing it. And I look down on other women, not based on like what I've achieved that they haven't, or, you know, something about me, I think is better, you know, in, in terms of some kind of measure of, of what we call successful or mm-hmm. important or significant. Like when I look down at somebody, it's because of their, like their behavior and how they treat other people. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So if I'm like, Oh, she's an asshole. You know, like she's not kind to people. She's selfish. She's rude. Like, and that's what we that's should do. The sort of thing yeah. that would I make think me look. Something down that somebody. I have been struggling with since starting the show is, I get really exhausted with women that hide their ho shit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's been something that's been misconstrued with me on the show because I'll say all the time, like, but these girls do this and they hide it and blah blah mm-hmm. blah. Because I feel like if I'm a girl that's sitting here putting myself on the line to make other women feel uncomfortable, yeah, like. Feel comfortable, feel comfortable about what they do. Excuse they me. Are. Feel com- feel more comfortable and feel more accepted. Yeah. I want like women to do the same. I think but this is still going back to judging. I don't think that it's not judging. Yeah, it's just that I want us I, all I to don't, embrace. I don't feel like every woman has to be open with their sexuality or how they get money yeah. or what they do behind they don't have closed to doors. Be open. I yeah. think but a lot of the people that we do. Um, get out of their shell or doing so with their partners and they're glad to hear like-minded people. Yeah. But I don't think that just because we're openly talking about suck, you know, openly talking about sucking dick, I think you're that a woman who does, saying. no, I know what you're saying because saying I know women what you're referencing to. I just feel like even if ex, ex girl or what, if we have an escort on the show who's openly talking about her experience as an escort, as we did with a, a future guest that you guys will hear, I don't think that she's any better than a woman who does, an ex, who does escorting and doesn't share this with the public or their friends. I think that you have the choice um, and it makes you know less whether you want to be open about your sexuality and how you make your money compared to another woman who wants, may want to keep we're their sex life We're on two different pages. Let's switch. Gonna get, yeah, we're going to get stuck yeah. in this. I think um, you really it's, don't hear what it's I'm fine. saying. I just think it's the same thing. So we'll go ahead and get into our uh, kick of the week and um actually kick... i do want to address that though okay Kinda is, yeah, okay i'm not it. entirely clear on either of your uh, points or okay you know but i think i was like i was with you i was like i know what you're saying I know what you're saying. then i was like i know what she's saying now i'm confused with what you're saying but um in terms of like women being free like i you know for much of my life like this is really wild to me to see like i've been a feminist since i was like 12 or 13 you know like i remember having to, i remember my parents being like well no you know now they're all in and they call themselves that but like Hold it on one w- second. Yeah. I just want to point out that they are both at the edge of their seat because they're they w- are waiting to see who you agree with. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. No, who you right. Agree I, think, I, I think it's. Right I, I understand what no, Mandy's saying too. I just no. think that Mandy isn't hearing me. No, out. no, no. Let no, her let her finish. finish. Yeah, I think they were. I heard. I think they were making two different points. Mm-hmm. We were. I think they were. Like, I don't think that they were like. That's why it sounds like we don't agree. Because uh, it's two different. I don't points. think that. Yeah, I think they were okay. just like, this is an apple and this is a piece gotcha. of meat. Right. Like, and if we all just embraced right. our sexuality, we wouldn't have women feeling ashamed for it. So I have. So I do have a response to that, and I think it touches on what you were talking about too, on some level. So hopefully, this is a good middle ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So. There, like, so I because I had this feminist thing very early on. You know, I, I had. I didn't have the best, uh, I didn't have a lot of, of relationships with boys and I had crushes and stuff but in terms of like high school and even college, you know, just a little bit of sex and a lot of making now, but not, you know, I wasn't really going there yet. But when I was, I was really comfortable just talking about it and then talking about my interest in it, you know, um, in ways that a lot of my friends weren't. Like I remember being in high school and at this point, we must have been pretty early in high school. Nobody allegedly, because I'm sure someone was it's lying. All alleged, I wasn't. Right. <laughs> you know, but allegedly nobody had uh, get, performed oral sex yet, right? Mm-hmm. And so all the other girls were talking about, Mm-mm, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do that. And somebody's kind of like, you know, only with my husband, blah, blah, blah. And I was the only one who was like, you know, guys, it's not that bad. <laughs> I hadn't done it yet, but I'm just in there like, I think that's just part of sex. You know, like, and I'm sure that most of them kind of like, yeah, they might have been a little grossed out by it, but I'm sure somewhere deep down, they either all knew that they would do it eventually. Some of them were probably really curious about it, if not really ready and excited to do it. And at least one of them probably had already done it. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, But like we were at that point, this is what we're judged on. You know, that you're Mm -hmm. the girl who doesn't do those things. We know this one. She sees, you know, she's at the basketball team. So and so they, you know, they ran a train on her or she went Mm -hmm. home with this one. Like at that point in our lives, the, the slut shaming was like. At, yeah, you know, the peak. virtue was Absolutely. being the hot girl who was sexy enough, but who wasn't necessarily having sex with anyone or with many people. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you're a slut, even, either way, you're a slut when someone decides. That's when the word you're comes a slut out. when some exactly. And so that I don't use the word hoe or slut. Like, I don't believe that hoes exist. You know, like I understand. Oh. It's taken me a while to kind of make peace with like. 
like when the first slut walk happened, like way before Amber got into it, I remember it was kind of like online. It was like black girls versus white girls. And the white girls, were, you know, the black girls were like, we're like fighting to be treated as to for us to not get caught. Like y'all are trying to reclaim slut and we're trying to be called by our names. How right. Do you, feel you know about what I mean? Our title then. I'm and curious. so, how do you? I, Okay, so I'll tell you. So I think it's super cute, and I do like it. And it took me, so this was years of me making pee. Because when people, the whole pro-ho and whole, you know, like, whole right. shit, I'm like, but there's no such thing as a hoe. We just do what we should be able to do what we want. Like the only Without rules, the name calling. Yeah, yeah, I think that the rules should just be be respectful of yourself, mm -hmm. of whomever you're dealing with, you know, whether it's casual or serious. You know, be honest, be truthful, be res be responsible. You know, like, you don't have to tell, like, if you if you're actually fuck if you're if we're fuck buddies like are you really my buddy are we friends you know what I mean or the homie lover friend thing like are we actually friends or are, or do we just fuck and those are two different relationships and they're both acceptable yeah but we're not gonna pretend like we friends who you know what I mean like right. don't right. let me if I if I'm having sex with you and my tire blows out I should be able to call you not because I think you're my man but because I'm a human being with whom we share this experience you know what I'm saying Absolutely. like if, if if you value me enough. To, to allow to, to come inside of my body, you should care about my safety, right? Maybe you're not the one to to call and help, you know, come hang out with me just because I'm bored because maybe that's not our relationship. But you should not, I shouldn't feel that you would let me out somewhere without a ride or that you wouldn't right. make sure I got home safe or that you wouldn't care if something happened to one of my parents. Like, yeah. you know, like, and I, I say this all the time when I talk to college students, I'm like, only have sex with people who respect you, period. And that's yeah. also respecting your pleasure. So maybe our interactions are very limited to, I'm not, I would never text him for a tire because that's not who he is. I'm only texting right. him about sex. It should sex. be on your terms, yeah. But even that, but even with that, does he care if you came? That, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's funny you're bringing this up because on an earlier episode, um, I was uncomfortable with hearing the word, and sometimes I still am. I have some insecurities with people thinking I'm a total whore, right? Or saying these words to me, sometimes it can feel uncomfortable. Um, with being called promiscuous mm -hmm. because the definition was having sex with no remorse or something like that. Like indiscriminate. Like you, yes. like you do it with anybody and you don't I care. I remember my main point in that conversation that Mandy and I had was, but I definitely established connections. And I think that's the key to wanting to make a horrible decision mm -hmm. and keeping that respect there even for yourself. If I make that connection within two hours and we have sex, or if I make it in two months, mm -hmm. I still want to make sure there is a ground level for respect. Right. And that's what's kept me from feeling confident in the decisions I made, whether real horrible and skanky or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've, I haven't had a like a train or like because people love to use this word train or male, male, female yeah. threesome. But I want to make sure that when I do, both of these men respect me enough yeah, that I want to get fucking have two dicks slapping across my face. And I think that's why I think the name of the podcast is super cute. And I'm just like, you know what? They speak about things, not just you all, but just like, and there's plenty of women. It's not necessarily an age thing. You know, like there are plenty of women who are just right. like, yeah, I'm off doing whole shit, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they've reclaimed it. And so in the way that it, it ain't the first word we've reclaimed. And I know that like black people reclaim the N word did not change how white folks felt about saying it to mm -hmm. us, about us. You right. know, all it did was make them mad that, you know, we try to tell them not to use Same it. And by the us, way, yeah. we ain't tell them, you know, we can tell them all we want, but they still use it. Um, <laughs> including the ones that will sit there and argue with you about like, it's not fair that I can't. They say that shit as soon as of they go home. They do. Right. But, um, but I think that because... It, I mean, being a nigger is not a real thing. It's a concept that they came up with. But being a hoe, being a slut, like those it's are not real thing. things, not right? This, it was and up. so I think the more that women just claim it, I do think that this these words have the power, like that the power can be taken away. So you can't call me Absolutely. that if yeah somebody that was at our live show. I don't want to mention his name, but we I don't know if he got into it. Me and you or had this conversation with the, both of us. But he said, "How can I not call you a hoe when at your show me and Mandy had a competition who was the bigger hoe and we talked about." little skanky things we did and who people got to vote at the end or yell out yeah. our names who did the more ho shit most ho shit and he said that why can't i say it and to me it reverts back to like you choose what mm -hmm. i want you to say do white people are they allowed to call us nigga because they've been listening mm -hmm. to this in musical time right and what's your intention in calling me that are you saying it like yes bitch you better be on your ho shit <laughs> or are you or are you no. calling me are you looking down at it's me it's like that video you know? when the girl said bitch in different ways bitch yeah. Yes. Bitch. No. Right. Bitch. I like, agree. Exactly. It means a different thing every and I, time. And I had this actual, this conversation, um, because we have this show, um, and we call, you know, our listeners the whore hive, mm -hmm. and, and we make fun of the word. Um, I had this issue, um, and I hate to bring them up again, but um, Tahoe, who has been on this show quite mm -hmm. a couple times, I went on his show, and he kind of introduced me as a hoe. 
And afterward, I had a problem with it because it's just like for you to introduce me to an audience in that yeah. way when I'm someone that you know, that you call for advice, that that you ask for business decisions. Mm -hmm. And so to kind of belittle me as a person to yeah. just this is a hoe that's coming on the show. And, that, and that's yeah. my problem because... I can do, I can suck dick, I can have yeah. sex. And that's kind of why we like to mention that we're two women in corporate America because what you're not going to do is demean me as a woman because of the choices that I make in the bedroom right. when you know me as such as so much more yeah. and that was my issue with him but even this is for, and it's funny because like one that's why and that was my issue with using the word period because I'm mm -hmm. like if we allow it to fester you know what I mean because I even like I would only use it to refer to, to, to male you know people of any gender that did fucked up stuff so like right. so, he's cheating on yeah. his wife or you know she lied you know something that involved deception oh, doing shit. something that like that to me is where more like deception you right. know you know what I mean, like, I think it's okay. I like you to can celebrate sleep with the word. 300 people in 300 days if you want to. But what my problem is with the one person who cheats on their one partner, one, you know what I mean? Right. Like, in an ongo in a long term affair and, right. and hides it. To me, you're the bad guy, not the person who had a whole lot of sex. Yeah. You know, the, the person Agreed. who hurt somebody. Agreed. Um, and, and willingly did it and did it over and over and over and over again. Right. Yeah. So I didn't say one person one time, one. I was like, no, I think like, a lot this of people still don't know the comfortability. But, and for what happened to you, though, I don't think he knew. I really don't believe he knew what your reaction would be because men don't understand and they haven't been getting enough. It's like men yeah. don't get what they can. I really don't think they know how to treat us yet. Sometimes. They don't. And we don't require. Almost to their fault. I mean, to Alex, our, to Alex is agreeing or are you disagreeing? I disagree. Why do you disagree? Not all men. We no, never sure. say all men. We never. We well, don't. But we don't, kind of when, all, when I heard it, right? Kind of I mean, I spoke to Mandy on the no, phone. And when I heard it, I, I remember feeling like it wasn't that big of a deal. But I also couldn't say that. Because that's all how she takes it. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't have sat there and thought it was a big deal, but she took it that way. And the, he, was, it sounds like he's implying something, you know, like he, right. he makes it. This is what bothers me. The stand, like, yes, you call yourself that you have the podcast, you talk right. about it, but like those same behaviors in a man would just be a guy who has a lot of sex, right? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it, Absolutely. It, so if you were to, even, I don't know, I just, I think that they, no, even if you claim it, there's still a level to which there's a thing that people just decide about you, whether they oh. affirm it or not. There's just a thing. And I, for me, I just think that the stand, like, you, if you call yourself a hoe because you feel like you're a hoe, you're a hoe right. then that's fine. But I would never call somebody that based on how much sex they have because who am I to, to come? There's a, there's no like where's the rule book? But it's right. you know what I mean. Like where's the standard? What's appropriate? What's we, okay? We right. interviewed a girl, Giselle Marie, who is a leader of a stripper strike, mm -hmm. and I believe I or you, I think it might have been me, said, "Oh, we've got a stripper on." She goes, "I'm an adult entertainer." Yeah, even though she called it the stripper strike. Um, do you remember that? And mm -hmm. like she stopped me. Yeah. And I remember like, and I didn't want to be disrespectful. Yeah. But I also was thinking like, well, you call it that, and it's the same shit. Yeah. But mm -hmm. think about it, and exactly. So she like, it thinking, definitely like, has to, a just the branding. And say I have the stripper on. Yeah. And I fucking have been doing all this shit and leading the goddamn protest in March, bitch. Nah. I That's agree. how she felt. Yeah. It's like stripper strike was a good like you you know adult tag. adult just like horrible. Decisions, say, a good like tag, adults yeah. entertain or walk out. It's not going to have the same right. punch as stripper strike. Yep. You know, like, so... It, right. I, I'm, I, I'm loving where all of this is going, and Alex looks like he wants to jump down our no, throats no, no, and no, say no. stuff. I, oh, okay. oh, you about to really jump down these throats. <laughs> well, Let's take a quick yeah, break, Yeah, I want to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hey, guys. Today's show is sponsored by Talkspace, the only online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere, anytime. By the way, anytime I used Talkspace in the past, and I remember being really high as fuck at 3 a.m. at some party, and I went right in my email, and I was like, thank God she on the fucking West Coast, because, bitch, I got some shit to say. I, they are there for you. That means you can improve your mental health even if you've got trouble making time for it in the past. Can't imagine fitting anything else to your life? Well, with Talkspace, it's as easy as sending them a message. Get something off your chest whenever you need to. It feels like a text message. It's an amazing application to use. Um, you could talk everyday challenges about work or home or these ancient ass motherfuckers or just life, you know. Uh, there are no extra commutes, no leaving the office, no judgments. Uh, do it from the comfort right of your own house. Remember, therapy isn't just about venting your innermost thoughts or digging into childhood memories. It's about practical and everyday strategies for stress management and living a happier life. Having a therapist simply provides you with a designated person for you to talk to who's trained to listen and helps you make positive changes. Somebody like Alex, you know what I mean? That intercepts between me and Mandy. That's what your therapist going to do. Mm -hmm. They going to intercept in your mm -hmm. bullshit. Mm -hmm. 
The Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experiences in addressing, uh, in addressing life challenges we all face. When I used Talkspace, I was able to say whether I wanted a man or a woman, and they can match you with the perfect therapist for the fraction of topics. Um, and for the price of traditional therapy. So if you want to get in on this, go to Talkspace.com slash decisions. Use the code decisions to get $45 off your first month and show your support for this show. Since y'all love this shit so much. Yeah. Go get you a therapist. That's decisions at Talkspace.com slash decisions. This episode is also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone of the Loudspeakers Network. That's right. Once again, we are signed to the Loudspeaker Network, y'all. Since building our studio, we teamed up with Rode because we wanted the best in microphones. And Rode offers professional broadcast quality mics. We have been using the Rode Procaster now for a few months, and the audio quality is amazing. I know we've been going up and down. You guys sometimes say we're too loud. Then you guys say we're too low. Well, now, hopefully, that's not a problem going forward. We told Alex he got to speak up. It's all going to be fine. You guys are now going to hear Alex moving forward (laughs) because now he knows how to speak into the Rode microphone. Um, to get more fun. information on the Rode Dude, Procaster. This does not sound like an advertisement. It sounds like a fucking roast. What? It's not a roast, bro. I'm just saying we have new microphones, bro. To get, to get more information on the Rode Procaster and Rode's other microphones, go to Rode.com. That's R-O-D-E dot com. Take your podcast to the next level with Rode. And now back to the show. If you guys haven't noticed yet, um, this episode, the horrible decision is feminism. So we kind of like jumped right into the motherfucking topic with, um, kind of how we feel about the word whore. And, um, one thing that I wanted to get into and we'll just add it into, um, our horrible decision because normally what we do is we add, we have kinks. Mm -hmm. Um, every week we do a kink of the week and this week with feminism and, and I had to do a little bit of research on it. What is feminism first? Can you tell us what a feminist is? Yeah, uh, a feminist is a person who believes that all genders are equal. Are you a feminist, Alex? Yes, absolutely. You're so, a feminist. Of course you are. You a lot of people show. will say things like, oh, feminist. So tell, can we explain how this is not going to be a male bashing and why? where, where is that misconception coming from? Because it'll lead into what we From want. men. You know, I mean, feminism exists. And there's lots of different types of feminism, right? Think of feminism as marijuana. You know, like there's a sativa and there's an indica. There's, there's different the white levels. Feminism. Of, Let yes, me stop. so there's white feminism. Yes, yes, do so not do that. White fe- thing, white folk. Yeah, so there's white feminism. There's you know, um, there's first wave feminism and second wave feminism, and there's you know, radical feminism. Like there's just lots of. Di- so what like, kind would you say that you align with? I mean, I, I tend to just use the you know the phrase black feminists. You know, black mm-hmm. feminist thought, um, which yeah. does have a Facts. whole a history and a trajectory. It and really a, does. you know, I won't get too 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 wonky and all that stuff here, but you. Know, you know, like people have done serious work fleshing out these ideas, mm-hmm. thinking about how we relate to men, to the world around us, to people of other races and have written brilliant things and explained things very plainly, you know, but at the heart of it, you know, when you think about black feminism, it's advocating for the needs and concerns of black women and, and girls and black queer people mm. with the same energy. level of commitment and energy that we give to black men and boys, right. you well, know, and, and also recognizing the ways that you can be oppressed and you can be an oppressor. And that's not mm. limited to straight black men. I like that. You know, but, but, but when it comes to when you think about black feminism and when you some think notes about of th- something now that you're talking about it, that I want to dig into with you. Yeah, yeah. actually, um, before we get into the notes, um, I wanted to play a, uh, a video real quick. Okay. Um, and this is from Friedman. What she does is, um, she talks about how feminism actually, um, relate to men mm-hmm. and how it kind of yielded men into going and to being more feminine with themselves, in that, if that makes sense, as well as the topic of hy- hypermasculinity. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to play the video. I'm going to put the audio in. Okay. Um, so if you guys want to take a listen, I'm going to play that real quick and check it out. In my opinion, the other half of the, woman, of the revolution, the other half of women's liberation movement is the boys in my country and in yours wearing their hair long. You know, And those boys who are wearing their hair long are saying, no to the masculine mystique. They are saying no to that brutal, sadistic, tight-lipped, crew-cut, you know, Prussian, uh, big muscle, you know, Ernest Hemingway, uh, kill bears when there are no bears to kill, and, and, and napalm all the children in Vietnam and Cambodia to prove that I'm a man, you know, and be dominant and superior to everyone concerned, and never show any, any softness. Well, these boys that are wearing their hair long are saying no. 
I don't have to be uh, all that uh, crew cut and tight lipped. Uh, I don't have to be dominant and superior to anyone. I don't have to have big muscles because there aren't any bears to kill. I don't have to, you know, kill anybody to prove anything. I can be tender and I can be sensitive and I can be compassionate and uh, I can admit sometimes that I'm afraid and I can even cry and I am a man and I am my own man and that man who is strong enough to be gentle that is a new man and he is the other half of this revolution and he will live longer I mean really what I had that I wanted to ask you I wanted to talk about the biggest feminist contradictions that mm -hmm. men think that we have I went to women's march and um, I can't remember what my sign said, but some guy was like, oh, what, what about the rest of us? So here's the things that I think are the top three that people talk shit about. For men. We're talking, still talking about men with yeah. feminism. Okay. Um, paying for meals. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to start with that one first. Why do men feel like because we're feminists. This is way off from what I thought it was going to be. Well, I mean, I'm, I didn't see the video, but here's... We talk, we, I hear about it on a lot of podcasts that I listen to. Guys say, oh, if you're such a mm -hmm. feminist, why do I have to do this for yeah. you? Blah, blah, blah. How does that, how does it affect our, our daily lives that? How do we, how do we put feminism into dating and chivalry and things yeah. like that? Well, it's, it's much easier than, you know, I think a lot of people believe. And I think that a lot of those misconceptions are, you know, that's hypocritical. And that's, yes, a lot of it is, is there's contradictions, right? Like, I don't know if yeah. hypocritical is fair. But, and sometimes, you know, you can be a feminist and you can be a hypocrite. You know, you can talk one thing and walk another. But, like, feminism doesn't mm -hmm. mean that a woman and a man in a relationship have to do the same things and carry the same burdens and, and move the same way and have the same, you know, patterns of behavior and responsibilities. It says that both sides are equal. Now, equal does not mean that we have the same skill set or the same interests, just that mm. our value is the same, right? And so if I'm like somebody, I'm terrible with math, budgeting like I'm very you know I, I love to shop and spend my, you know and I can be very frugal and I can be you know uh, a, what's the word I, I can be you know frugal but I'm not somebody who should be balancing the family you know checkbook right, right if there's myself and another adult like I'm just that's not my strong suit I like to cook I'm not super great at clean like cleaning is not my jam so like I have somebody come clean my house you know what I mean so like if I'm in a relationship with a man and I cook every meal that we eat. It's not because I, I should not cook all of our meals because I'm a woman. If I cook all our meals, it should be because I'm the best cook and I enjoy doing it or I'm the one who has the time to do it. You know what I mean? If it's just and I'm the best cook, I still need to. OK, I'm the best cook. But does that I mean that I like doing it? Does that mean that right. I have time? And the reason or I that, that up is because we were talking about man, men thinking we're bashing them. But it's like, OK, well, this nigga ain't cleaning up the house. Oh, well, if you're a feminist, mm -hmm. why don't like... Well, you know, I, I think that men and, and women who are who don't know a lot about feminism are very quick to kind of throw it back in your face because mm -hmm. it makes them uncomfortable, you know, because it does say, no, it's not about bashing men or hating men. It's not about not spending time with them or cutting them all off or canceling them or calling them all problematic. But it is about confronting certain privileges that they have that mm -hmm. are not deserved and certain behaviors that they are apt to to, you know, perform certain things that they're likely, you know, or allowed to do that are not good for us or for themselves, right? Mm, and so yeah. to the to what you were talking about in the clip, you know, and, and Betty Friedan is one of the most well-known kind of feminist thinkers uh, in history, but I will say, and she certainly said some, some things in her work that was very, you know, that was powerful and correct, yeah. but I didn't get my game from, my feminist game from white women like that. Right. You know what okay. I mean? Like that's, that's not you. where I look to to kind of like shape it for me. It was Bell Hooks, it was Melissa Harris Perry, it was Joan Morgan, you know, these are black women. Um, and, and on some level, Alice Walker, uh, it now, can I ask you real yeah. quick? Because, um, I, I feel like that's kind of similar to what we just talked about, even, um, talking about the whole hierarchy. Yeah. Um, when you talk about women empowerment, um, I, I like to think that we're talking about all women and I don't want to all lives matter this thing yeah. at all, but, um, why not uplift the Latino women and the white women and why is it that we talk about white feminists and black feminists and we're all women yeah. and we all have fought the same oppression um, mm. uh, well maybe not in all areas yeah. of course black women having um, to deal with the slavery um, yeah. aspect of oppression as well and 
I'm just speaking at it from an all women aspect. So why, why we is feminism it? even yeah. divided when we so, all kind of want to do better as I'm women? About to just, like so, jump on it with you too, but go ahead. So you, guess. you know, when black what the work of black feminism does actually does advocate for all women. Okay. However, what it does not advocate for is for white women to continue to have the unearned privilege that they have, not just as white people, but as white women in particular. And mm. so how they are able in the workplace, in social settings, you know, and beyond to have undue influence over the lives of black women and girls. Right. The way that, you you know, you could have a white female colleague just as light as you are. Right. <laughs> you know, and you could be talking to each other in the same, you know, the, the same tone of voice, the same, you know, volume and she could very easily just start crying and say you've intimidated her and it is going to be in good luck to you trying to prove otherwise mm. you know let us not forget um, like, 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 that there are more Latino women in this country than I mean Latino people than yeah. there are blacks what 12% mm-hmm. of the population yeah. I think 15% for multiracial blacks. So we're already tiny. Why can't we have yeah. a group that shouts out for And us? that leads with that. Right, exactly. This is the, the same argument us. as the Black and Lives Matter And a lot Matter of Latina thing. women are black, too. Right. You know oh, what you I know mean? They, so the, one, the ones who identify as black. I've been, I've been so know, excited about Afro-Latinas. Are, and there's so many of them. There have always been so many of them. They've always been part yep. of black feminism. You know, like, that, that's not new. That That's, you know, something we talk about more because we're better at talking about intersectionality. Right? I've Which always is having, generalized black feminism, though, as women of color period in my mind i kind of in a way it's it's interesting so i um there are ways so obviously white women have power and privilege over women of color that you know we don't have over them right and in certain situations other women of color can have anti-blackness fuels so much you know what i mean that you can have somebody who's from you know who does not have much you know but has the and, and they're not white but what they do have is that they're not black and that they mm. can look at us like niggers too, you right. know? And so that does come into play when you're talking about women of color and feminism. I think in general, have women of color been better with each other than white women have been to us? Absolutely. Is there coalition building? Is there multicultural feminist, you know, work being done? Yes. And, and, and plenty of us black feminists, I have relationships with white women and white feminist organizations and publications. It's not about saying not all y'all over here, me over here, but it's about we need to call a thing a thing. And so... White women have been able to dominate the the conversation of what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a feminist. Even mm. if you're not a feminist, what it means to be a woman right. in so many ways has been defined by white womanhood. When you talk about blackness, so much of that has been defined by black malehood. Mm. Right. Right. And so we exist at the intersection of both of these oppressions and these people like our closest allies, you would think, should be women, you know, white women and women of other races and black men. But white women and black and black men in particular have this unique ability to be black men are our brothers, but in some ways they can also be our oppressors. White yeah. women, we don't have that feeling of sisterhood to them, which makes it even more complicated, right? So it's easy to throw it's easier for many of us to throw white women away than it is to throw black men away. And I'm not saying that we should by far. You know what I mean? But it's right. like to be to feel betrayed, we can. you know. <laughs> but when oh. you're feeling betrayal, when you're talking about ways that you know they they have power over us, right? No, so. I I haven't had a lot of white women, especially in the workplace, treat me good. I actually, it's funny. A lot of people will sometimes make comments to me, not really if they're a listener of the show because they get me, but some people will say like, "Oh, you're only half white. Why you be acting like that? Or you're only half black. Why you act like that?" And um, in the workplace, I've had instances where I'm ready to go off. Yeah. I call it my blackout moments. And I've had black women at work tell me in, in corporate America, like, bitch, you're going to make us yeah. look crazy. Even when these white girls will sit in my face like, yeah. well, you know, she was really, like, you know, aggressive with my sale. And, like, she did that. Blah, 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 and just, It's well, just like what you were saying <laughs> earlier. We were talking about, man, I just wish people would just, like, let your whole shit out. Like, why are you hiding? It's like those women, more often than not, they knew just as well that those other black women, the same way that you knew that what went down was wrong. Yeah. They knew it too, but they put on that mask. They put on it. Like there's certain things I'd be like, just looking at you, like look at your podcast, your tattoos, how you're dressed. Like there are things that you're just like, yes, I'm in corporate America, but corporate America does not define me. Yeah. And I can find success and happiness in other parts of my life too. Absolutely. And there are people that are like, 
you know, the only thing I know is this, is this. And if you take this away from me, how do I land in another space like that? So you could lose your corporate job, God forbid, and maybe have two podcasts within the span of a week. They're like, okay, well, if I'm not working here, I got to work at another here. And if I pop off on somebody, I'm I'm done. But you're, you're mm-hmm. bringing up a lot of work. And I wanted to even tie Alex into this if I can, because reading a lot of feminist, uh, a lot of feminist tweets and what they stand for, a lot of it does gear toward the, I don't need a man. I, I work. I make money. I can do what you can do. What Anything you can do, I can do better. There was a whole thing in the 1950s about that and having the women empowerment um, thing. And I want to know if you feel like that is hurting women um, right now. And I say that to say, like, a lot of men now are expecting women to split the bills. We're now <laughs> doing the splitting dates conversation <laughs> on who pays the date. Mm. Um, and now you have these overly independent women is it hurting the and and i don't want to relate it back to patriarchy but we did have a comment um we had a the bk chat episode me and wheezy kind of went in on her because she pretty much said her pussy was all she needed to bring to the table Mm -hmm. and me and wheezy kind of brought in the whole well you don't cook you don't clean and people were like i can't believe wheezy and mandy are sitting here bringing up you know gender roles we fucked up and because she had a bigger point than that and it did took me a few weeks mm -hmm. to realize that her point was like I got pussy. Why do I have to do all this shit to keep this nigga? Mm. And she was right. And what do you, what do and you, I, and I take a lot of those things that I said to her back. Cause what, I really didn't, I should have listened to the whole clip. Well, what do you think, um, Alex, like as far as the feminist movement and women empowerment and what we're doing and standing, is it kind of hurting us in terms of dating and what men expect from us? And maybe this equality that we're speaking of, if it's kind of hurting us in the long run or making y'all less of what y'all need to be, AKA men. I wouldn't say it hurts you in any way, actually. Um, every person is different. Right. Men or women. So their expectations are different as well. Me, I'm, I guess you would say a little bit more classic. I'm used to paying when I go out to dinner. But when I've been in long-term relationships after a while, there may be some times where it's like, hey, sh- she'll treat me for this time. Okay. You know? But it's just not always. Okay. You know? And... I like when it happens, but if it didn't happen, I wouldn't look down upon her or whatever. You like, wouldn't look down yeah. upon her. Okay. Yeah. I can... But I like a nice, strong, independent woman. That's cool. Like, I just that's know it's kind of dating masculine. It's different. Than... It's interesting. No, like, that's we... super attractive. When we talk about like, uh, you know, an independent woman versus a woman who's not independent, like the numbers show that most of us at the at, at least Especially black for women. an extended period of time in our lives are independent. So mm-hmm. you don't have to put a bow on it in our past. Like I don't talk about like as an independent woman with a good like yeah, I have a good job. I'm an adult. You know, I have responsibilities to, to take care of. Like it, it's it's and I was not born into a community where I could take for granted that I could fuck around and, and figure things out. And that one right. day I'm going to marry somebody who makes over six figures and will have two kids, you know, a picket fence and a dog. Right. Like, that's just not right. reality for, you know, for, for people in urban locations, let alone no. just black folks. Of course, right. I, I wanted to. I, I was saying that I, for a long time. And the more and more money I make, yeah, I don't think I'm going to, with my new job, I'm not going to, it's going to be very difficult for me to meet someone that makes more money than me. And I realize how that sounds like I'm boasting. Yeah. But it really is me having to knock myself down a peg to say, bitch, chill the fuck out. Like, yeah. But and that's fine. I just I don't know. Like I don't think one when I think of feminism, I'm not thinking about like paying for dates. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I just think we have so much bigger so friends. Like we gotta teach. Oh, they love to throw that at you. Yeah. Oh, so what you splitting this too? Yeah. Like yeah, we gotta we gotta teach. Yeah, I ain't splitting shit. We gotta teach. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna I mean, hold you. I do the performative. You know, it's funny. I went out with somebody who was a little bit older not too long ago, and I didn't do. I was like, you know what? Since you're over forty, so and I don't usually date uh, older men, and I'm like, I'm not even gonna pretend to reach. You know, with a guy who's younger or my age, I'll do the kind of like. I, sure. know, that's why. I was I'm like, not pretending to reach. I'm not pretending to reach. I'm not pretending to reach because but, um, I don't need you thinking the next time we go out of the reach. I, think I, appre- about- I appreciate it's the pretending. It's a fake reach. We know it's fake. Yeah, but we know it's fake. But look, the guys know it's fake. We all know, but it's still a nice gesture. You know, I think it has to be done. It's a silly gesture. I think it's a nice gesture. I'm that one when the bill comes. I'm looking at my phone. Hey, I'm I'm not feeling too good. Do I? Can you want me to bring you something? You better not tell me to come up there with some soup. But you know, but you need to know nice that I offer. But you know, but like, I really do want, like, when we think yeah, about I feminism. <laughs> Look, I'm going to ask you, Alex, me and you, we hang out every week. And if I got sick and you were like, literally, oh, can I come bring you some shit? I'd be like, no, why am I going to inconvenience you? 
And if you ask me to do it and come all the way to Queens, I'm cussing you out. Nigga, you know I ain't mean that shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no. Yeah, but we're friends. I'm talking about if I was dating somebody, I'm, I'm come take about, care of me. So real quick, oh, I want to go ahead. Yeah. Um, before we go, I want to mm-hmm. get into a whole mail real quick. While we're talking about women, 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 I thought that this was um, quite a funny um, letter that we got in, and I think that we could probably give her some good advice. It says, hey, girls, love your podcast. Listening to you guys keeps my ass sane. I'm a woman, and I am in a committed relationship with another woman. I have had many men and have fucked many women. However, she was the first girl I have ever actually dated. I am the happiest I have ever been with her. It's been two years, and frankly, I miss the dick. The toys are just not doing it anymore. I am seriously at a loss because I love her to death, and I am really happy. But man, I miss being dicked down by a man. What do I do? Thank you. By the way, this was titled, My Heart Wants the Pussy, But My Pussy Wants the Dick. So. Is the girlfriend lesbian? Yes. Okay, open relation. Open relationship, you think? You know my advice is going to be open relationship all day, every day. I think... um... (laughs) That's the one next. Yeah. So uh, I think, especially wanting to, when you crave someone else, right? When I was with my ex, the one that I talked about, broke like left me for Jesus. One of the things he said to me was like, I hate seeing you with other women. Like we had threesomes together. And he's like, I love you. I don't want to share you. And that's when I knew that open relationships was going to be my thing. Because I... I'm truly bisexual. Yeah. And I really believe that if you keep holding out, like yeah. your love is only going to take you so far if your sexual desires are Absolutely. really not met. That's when I was in Miami, I dated a girl um, and she treated me so good. I say to this day, she probably treated me better than any guy did. Probably did. Um, and we actually had the agreement that I could keep fucking Jordan. She knew that that was the guy that I enjoyed being with. And so she literally, we set those guidelines like, okay, I'm the only girl that you can deal with. And he's the only guy that you can deal with outside of me. And I thought that as someone who wanted a relationship with me, that she allowed me to express that I yeah. still needed dick in my life, even though we did the whole strap. I mean, trust thing. me, it's like, an ego bruise for someone to tell you that you can't satisfy me in these, this certain way. Yeah. And I can only imagine how inadequate that other person may feel. But if you're thinking about either stepping out and it's something you really need, it's you're already if you're thinking about it, you're already cheating. It sounds yeah. yeah, it sounds like it's more to it than just the the feeling of, you know, it's the connection with the man. It's the so connection that, with the man because she's yeah. getting she said the toys just aren't doing it. And to me that's yeah. the penetration. I think it's I definitely the body. I think it's more time. than it's like the when I'm sleeping with a woman and a man, I don't necessarily miss the other, but I will say this much. When I'm with a woman, the next thing that I'm excited for with a man is his it's really random, but it's his sweat and mm-hmm. his chest and his arms, mm-hmm. or like his thighs, how big they are. Yeah. When I start craving a woman, it's like breast, it's hair, mm-hmm. it's the smell, it's just different things. It's just different, different things. things. So it's not necessarily that he can't give me this smell of pussy that I miss, but like right. there are certain things that you crave, and I right. really don't think it means that you don't love that person. No, it's I interesting. Agree. I've heard, you know, because so I've heard so many bisexual people, you know, talk about like I hate that people think we can't be monogamous because we can, but I also think that like what you're, I don't I know, think I can't. I don't think it's necessarily bisexuality that makes it impossible for people to be i think it's just that who that that person is just not wired for that or interested in it because you could like straight people are not that good at monogamy the way they you know what i'm saying so that's yeah, like, I, I, so I like, know. They show that. all these so like, and shit tristan thompson so. kevin hart so i think more of wait us. what what's the problem we can't call out niggas are you about to cheat? say men don't cheat men don't cheat Aww, Aww, that's God. so lame 80, that's the I know. worst internet I, meme I I'm like, well, this sit, right we take it's your microwave funny. nigga it's getting away because because men cheat they all cheat thank you i'm sorry black men Oh, black uh, men don't cheat. That's even worse. Yeah, keep that's the mic. Way. Like, I don't know. Away. Like that. That joke was funny for like two weeks. I'm like these niggas for are two still weeks. About black men don't it was. It was funny like, for one I'm minute. Oh my god. Bullshit, you got to like, it was funny for one people minute. People like the comedic. Theology. Anyways, I wanted to go ahead before we wrap up. Where can our listeners find you? Oh, yes, I feel like there was so much that we did not get to motherfucking get on, but we gonna have to. I know. Add I'm, that in another time. I'm gonna we'll give you to. the super brief. Just like if you, if I'm the first feminist, you guys that you ever heard, not you two. <laughs> Like listeners, hey listeners. Sure. If you never heard of a feminist who wasn't just like, because there's Twitter feminism. Yeah. And I'm Bitch, definitely. Come on! A, and then there's like the form. There's the feminism that lives offline, and that's no like I know. And people call me hey, like, a Twitter feminist. Hype these feminism. Right. And so the thing is, it's kind of like somebody getting really excited about healthy eating, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, what if working I hate out, vegans. working They're out so comes annoying. into Do you know what like, the difference is? Someone said to me, and I really appreciated this woman said it to me. I was at a Christmas party. Sorry, I want to make this short. 
and I had half of the room divided. Yeah. And she said to me, that's how I know you real about your shit because you knew niggas was going to get pissed. Yeah. And you knew conversations was going to be uncomfortable and you still did it. Yeah. That's fucking fem. That's protesting. That's black lives matter shit. That's everything. You really fucking yeah. talking that shit. Yeah. You and I think know if you're that you have people that don't like it. And I'll, yeah, you have some other people that are not going to like it, but you're also not saying it because you know people aren't going to like it. You know, right. like there are a lot of folks that just say things for shock value. Probably like, yeah. this, you know, he's going to be mad at me today. And I'm like, every time I know everybody's going to be, you know, the, not everybody, but every time I know that a bunch of men are going to be mad, you know, just it depends log what off, it is. Sis, if it's R. Kelly off. or Bill Cosby, it's like, be mad. This is not my right. problem. This is your problem. You got to you know, know our purpose. What do you think your main purpose? purposes before we wrap up like for feminism what do you yeah, want the most me, what do you I want to say to black women the most i want us to be empowered i want us mm-hmm. to feel free i want us to be happy i want us to have orgasms if we so choose i want us to be able to do the like things that. that we like to do with the people we like to do them with i want us to have healthy loving relationships with whomever mm-hmm. you know and i want us to be respected by our men you know and I, i'm like i don't care if, if you're a black man who only dates white women who dates i mean even though i do think i'm you, so if, mad if we didn't get on that date, motherfucking Topic. If you only date people who are not like you, then yes, I do have a I have some serious questions for you. But if you're somebody who dates, you know, all types of women of all types of creeds and colors, sometimes black, sometimes whatever, and you end up marrying or you know having children Someone with else, somebody yeah. else, I don't think that means that you don't love or you can't respect Serena said? black she was like, women. I didn't know you I have do this to. Shit. Yeah, but like what I judge that on is like, do you love and respect black women? You know, for if you're a black woman who's done that, do you love and respect black men? Do you still have mm-hmm. black male, your black female friends in your life, people mm-hmm. who you can call in and who can call? on you are you going to show up for us that Amen. for me it's not about who you go home with it's about like your relationship to us you know do you, do you see us as less than these other women do you think of us as only what we can do for you how we can help you how mm-hmm. we can support you, you know what and you Kanye preach on all this black We're... women in and it's life. interesting because ebro ebro said that and people were mad at him no, but like he did and I, yeah he said it. he said kaya needs a hug from a black you know he needs a black woman hug or old black woman to hug him or something you know and so like and a lot of black women were like no we done being your meals. We don't need to, you know, like, or a man fucking up should not be a black woman's responsibility. And so I was torn because I was Ooh. like, I feel that too. You know, they were saying like, they were like, nah, brothers, he done told us who what he thinks of us. Oh, I, I really right. don't appreciate that we saying go, that Kim, like know. the whole Beyonce holds Jay-Z down, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. She got three goddamn kids. She ain't, please. Jay Z is a grown ass man, and so is Kanye. Yeah, Stop like giving I, I didn't, that meme was awful. Like was I'm not blaming. I'm, I wouldn't blame. That. I didn't yeah. like that. I, yeah, he did. I don't blame Kim. I'm like, like the family where, where, is trash. Where was your wife? But like, I trying her blame best, her. and you were out here with with chicks on chains and pimping. So like, you right. can't. Agreed. And that's the point. I think it's like we can't be responsible for the actions. However, I do wish that Kanye had black women surrounding him with love, who he also can pour back into. So don't just call me when you need some help. Yeah, right. this should be black women who you know like. And I got, and I've been producing records for her. I remember him talking about Tiana Taylor and how he sat on her record for too long. She's immensely talented. She yeah, should she be a, a recording star. She yeah. should be. You know so what I'm saying? For 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 a lot of these topics, and I know you talk about them on your Twitter, yeah. your Instagram, you post stuff. Where can our listeners? catch you where can they find you drop the at name do you have a website yeah, um, drop all that information yes it's uh on twitter and instagram it's at jamila lemieux um we'll I go ahead and add that in the, in the bio because we know i, mean, I, I, I can barely can 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 if i sat here and tried to spell it but we'll <laughs> I'm we'll definitely something. drop that um yeah. in the description of this bio lemieux, we'll also like have it we'll also <laughs> have it when we post um the clip to instagram yeah. um and everything and i want to thank you so much for coming on thank you were amazing you had this fucking show extra woke i was just like Lord, don't say real. I know you don't like the word. This shit <laughs> was woke conscious. as hell. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. And for our patrons, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post um, a couple of the feminist um, sources that I found, including the video of the art of, of the audio that you guys heard on this episode, as well as uh, some first sources um, that are just really good to read up on the history of feminism. So I'll include that if you are a patron. And the rest of y'all niggas, um, in a few days, we're going to be in ATL. You know, my period going to be right off when we arrive. <laughs> And I she am wants to fuck ready one of to you go, guys. dude. So, so um, we hope through. to see you guys at the not, live Alex show. Is probably going to be done working on himself that weekend. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, he ready. That dick going to be slanging. Meanwhile, he typing Anyways. in that phone. Jamila, <laughs> let me you know how you spell this shit. <laughs> Look, ah, he's on your shit. I'm so done. Anyways, <laughs> guys, thank you so much. This has been yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye.